dear all welcome to the class on alu design alu stand for arithmetic logic unit design so in this particular class we will try to understand what are the different operations performed by the alu first and then i will tell you how we can design arithmetic logic unit which is a central part of any processor so these are the contents for this particular lecture first we will understand the brief introduction about the alu then we will move on to the designing process of the alu and finally we will see the function table for the alu so dear all as you know that alu it stand for arithmetic logic unit arithmetic logic unit basically it is a central part of any processor inside the computer and it is used to carry out the arithmetic logic operation up to this moment i hope you all are clear what are the different arithmetic and logic operations for your kind information at this moment addition subtraction multiplication division these are the arithmetic operations and logical and logical or logical not logical or logical xor logical xnor these are the logical operations what we all have studied so far in this particular course so your alu is responsible for these operations and also it is also responsible for some shift operations what we discussed in the previous class they are very important when we are uh, having a um, uh, requirement for changing the values inside a register just to change the uh, meaning or just to change the uh, meaning of the control signal or or to change the status of a register so they are very very uh, also very very important part within the alu so in nutshell i can say that your arithmetic logic unit used for arithmetic operations what i listed just uh, told you couple of minutes earlier and for the logic operation and the shift operation that is what it makes the alu which is a very very integral part of any processor so now we move further in some processor the alu is divided in two unit in some processor or you can say in older processor i can say that it is divided into two unit that is arithmetic unit alu and a logic unit lu otherwise in general it is a combined unit which is known as the alu now we move on to the next slide the designing of the alu as you know that i am telling you repeatedly it is a very very important and central part of any processor so it requires a lot of effort designing thinking and and really a tedious task the designing of the arithmetic and logic unit because your entire system ultimately at the hardware level at the lowest level it does not matter in which language or which platform you are working as a user on your computer or or any any particular application but finally friends when things goes down right up to the bottom of of the of the processing level then it is the alu basically it is the processor and ultimately finally the alu which is responsible for converting the every instruction of your application into the arithmetic and logic and shift operations so one stage of an arithmetic logic and shift unit it is shown in the diagram on the next slide now let us try to understand ke how it look likes and how it function so i move on to the next slide here yes dear friend this is a very very complex and important diagram you can say and the name is one stage why i am saying it is just an one stage or 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 a partial you can say arithmetic and logic unit it is not the complete one it is i is just a subscript if let us say i want to build a n bit alu then i have to include n number of similar stages in my complete alu circuit then i can say that it is a circuit for the n bit alu but as i am telling you that designing of the alu and the internal structure of the alu is a complex one so we are just for understanding purpose taking a one stage only one stage of the alu so let us say i say it is decided by the or it is represented by the subscript i 
तो इन दिस डायग्राम इफ यू हैव ए क्लोज लुक ऑन द डायग्राम इट इज शोइंग दैट द अर्थमेटिक सर्किट दैट इज वन स्टेज आई एम रिपीटेडली टेलिंग यू इट इज अर्थमेटिक सर्किट हेयर अनदर इज लॉजिकल सर्किट इज हेयर देन द टू बॉक्स द टू रेक्टेंगुलर बॉक्सेस वन बॉक्स इज शोइंग अर्थमेटिक सर्किट अनदर इज शोइंग द लॉजिकल सर्किट एंड देन फाइनली देयर इज अ 4 into 1 मल्टीप्लेक्सर नाउ लेट अस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ दिस होल अरेंजमेंट वर्क्स so here as i am telling you that this is the arithmetic circuit and this is the logical circuit now the arithmetic and logic circuit basically this the operations within the arithmetic and logic circuit they are selected by the use of these two selection line which are the s0 and s1 so as you can see here that s0 s0 and the s1 both the selection input goes as a as a input to the arithmetic circuit as well as the logical circuit and let us say these are the two numbers a i and b i these are the two number a and b for the stage i which is represented by the subscript i so so a and b they are also goes into the as a input inside the arithmetic circuit and logic circuit means a and b they also work as a input for this particular logic circuit as well as for the arithmetic circuit and now one important point is that this is the carry carry from the previous stage so it works ci works as a input carry to the arithmetic circuit and the next carry which is out of the arithmetic circuit ci plus 1 it has to be inserted or it must work as a input carry to the next stage arithmetic circuit what i mean to say and now and now moving further the two selection to another selection line namely s2 and s3 as you can see here in this diagram so they are also used in the process but they works as a input to the multiplexer so as i am telling you that s2 and s3 they work as a input to the 4 into 1 multiplexer which is showing in the diagram here now the important question comes here that what is the purpose of this multiplexer apart from this arithmetic and logic circuit so i can tell you that this multiplexer is used to select the output which are coming from the arithmetic circuit as you can see in the diagram it is the di air and the ei which is the coming output from the logical circuit so basically for it is used uh, it, this particular multiplexer is used for the selection in the two different outputs which one is from the arithmetic circuit that is di and one from the logical circuit that is ei one another important line is also here which is very very important point to emphasize here that ai minus 1 and ai plus 1 these are the two additional input they are also work as a input to this multiplexer so basically these two inputs ai minus 1 and ai plus 1 they are used for the shift operations so ai minus 1 is used for the right shift operations and ai plus 1 is used for the left shift operation and finally fi is the final output of i stage make sure we are not here seeing the complete structure of the arithmetic logic unit as i told you in the beginning of the discussion of this particular alu design that we are just seeing here the one stage of the alu so fi i can say that it is the output of this multiplexer or in other word it is the output of this particular stage of alu stage of alu so this is the entire diagram which is showing the internal structure of the one stage of the arithmetic logic unit and for your kind information again i am repeating the line that this ci it is a carry input and finally then ci plus 1 which is the ci plus 1 which is the carry output out of the 
this particular i stage and now ci plus 1 will work as a input to the next stage arithmetic circuit so now we move on to the next slide from here dear friends as you can see on the uh, slide that this is the function table for alu so what we discussed just one minute earlier the a particular stage of arithmetic logic unit so in terms of function if i say that arithmetic logic unit of the previous slide it shows the 14 different operation what we can see in this function table for the alu so out of the 14 the 8 are the arithmetic operations up to here and then from here up to here these are the four logical operation and then finally these are the two shift operation so 8 plus 4 plus 2 what it makes the 14 operation what is represented by the previous diagram in the previous slide so as we can see the function table up to this moment these are the 8 up to this moment these are the 8 these are the arithmetic operations so they are generally selected when we are having the s3 and s2 both the selections line so these are the selection line what we saw in the previous uh, diagram of the stage of alu so when these s3 and s2 both are zero when the value of these both input are zero so then we say all these operations this this and up to this they are the arithmetic operations and here c in plays a very important role in the selection of particular arithmetic let us say if it is uh, uh, seen 0 then it is a transfer a f equal to a if seen is equal to 1 that it is a increment a and likewise if seen 0 with having s1 uh, 0 and s0 1 it is addition operation and similarly if s1 0 S zero one and C in one, it is a add with carry, which is F A plus B plus one. So in nutshell, I can say that up to this list, when S three S two both are zero, so the selection of a particular arithmetic operation is done with the help of S one input, S zero input, and the carry input that is C in. Now goes down to the list when S zero, sorry S three. Is zero and S two is one. Is S three zero and S two one. So zero one, zero one, zero one and zero one. These four are represented as the logical operation. When the value of S three zero and S two one, so for this entire space, this represent the logical operation and individual logical operations. Make sure they are only represented or they are only categorized with the help of the selection line s1 and s0 s1 and s0 when both are zero then it is a logical and when s1 and s0 is zero one it is a logical or and when s1 and s0 is one zero it is a logical xor and likewise it is a complement a and have a look here that in the selection of the logical operation your carry input does not play a role that is why it is marked as cross or don't care finally when s3 is 1 and s2 is 0 and s3 1 and s2 1 to so these two situations they do represent the shift operation so now you have a close look here in the selection of the shift operation only s3 and s2 plays role and s1 s0 and c in they have been marked as cross or don't care they do not play role as far as the selection of the shift operation is concerned when s3 s2 is 1 0 so it is a shift right operation and when s3 and s2 is 1 1 respectively then it is a shift left operation shift left operation which is represented by shla what we studied in the previous lecture so dear friend this is all about the function table as i told you it is representing the 14 different operations including the eight arithmetic for logical and two shift operation for the alu designing what we discussed in the previous slide so this is the list of references 
what I used to prepare the content of this particular lecture. Finally, thank you.